adjective. In linguistics, an adjective, abbreviated, is a describing word, the main syntactic role of which is to qualify a noun or noun phrase, giving more information about the object signified. Adjectives are one of the English parts of speech, although they were historically classed together with the nouns. Certain words that were traditionally considered to be adjectives, including the, this, my, etc., are today usually classed separately, as determiners. Adjective comes from Latin additional, noun, a calc of. In the grammatical tradition of Latin and Greek, because adjectives were inflected for gender, number, and case-like nouns, a process called declension, they were considered a subtype of noun. The words that are today typically called nouns were a thing called substantive nouns, nomen substantivum. The terms noun substantive and noun adjective were formerly used in English, but the terms are now obsolete. A given occurrence of an adjective can generally be classified into one of three kinds of use. Adjectives feature as a part of speech, word class, in most languages. In some languages, the words that serve the semantic function of adjectives are categorized together with some other class, such as nouns or verbs. In the phrase a Ford car, Ford is unquestionably a noun, but its function is adjectival, to modify car. In some languages adjectives can function as nouns, uno rojo, a red object, span. As for confusion with verbs, rather than an adjective meaning big, a language might have a verb that means to be big, and could then use an attributive verb construction analogous to big being house to express what English expresses as big house. Such an analysis is possible for the grammar of standard Chinese, for example. Different languages do not always use adjectives in exactly the same situations. For example, where English uses to be hungry, hungry being an adjective, Dutch, French, and Spanish use hunger heaven, avoir femme, and tenir hombre respectively, literally to have hunger, the words for hunger being nouns. Similarly, where Hebrew uses the adjective zak, roughly in native, English uses the verb to need. In languages which have adjectives as a word class, they are usually an open class, that is, it is relatively common for new adjectives to be formed via such process asis derivation. However, Bantu languages are well known for having only a small closed class of adjectives, and new adjectives are not easily derived. Similarly, native Japanese adjectives, I adjectives, are considered a closed class, as are native verbs, although nouns, an open class, may be used in the genitive to convey some adjectival meanings, and there is also the separate open class of adjectival nouns, not adjectives. Many languages, including English, distinguish between adjectives, which qualify nouns and pronouns, and adverbs, which mainly modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Not all languages have exactly this distinction and many languages, including English, have words that can function as both. For example, in English, fast is an adjective in a fast car, where it qualifies the noun car, but an adverb in he drove fast, where it modifies the verb drove. In Dutch and German, adjectives and adverbs are usually identical in form and many grammarians do not make the distinction, but patterns of inflection can suggest a difference a German word like klug, cleverly, takes endings when used as an attributive adjective, but not when used adverbially. It also takes no endings when used as a predicative adjective, er ist klug, he is clever, whether these are distinct parts of speech or distinct usages off same part of speech is a question of analysis. It can be noted that while German linguistic terminology distinguishes adverbial from adjectivische Formen, German refers to both as Eigenschaftswörter, property words. Linguists today distinguish determiners from adjectives, considering them to be two separate parts of speech, or lexical categories, but formerly determiners were considered to be adjectives in some of their uses. In English dictionaries, which typically still do not treat determiners as their own part of speech, Determiners are often recognizable by being listed both as adjectives and as pronouns. Determiners are words that are neither nouns nor pronouns, yet reference a thing already in context. Determiners generally do this by indicating definiteness, as in a versus the, quantity, as in one versus some versus many, or another such property. An adjective acts as the head of an adjective phrase or adjectival phrase, AP. In the simplest case, an adjective phrase consists solely of the adjective, more complex adjective phrases may contain one or more adverbs modifying the adjective, very strong, or one or more complements, such as worth several dollars, full of toys, or eager to please. In English, attributive adjective phrases that include complements typically follow the noun that they qualify, 
an evildoer devoid of redeeming qualities. In many languages, including English, it is possible for nouns to modify other nouns. Unlike adjectives, nouns acting as modifiers, called attributive nouns or noun adjuncts, usually are not predicative. A beautiful park is beautiful, but a car park is not car. The modifier often indicates origin, Virginia real, purpose, work clothes, semantic patient, man-eater, or semantic subject, child actor, however, it may generally indicate almost any semantic relationship. It is also common for adjectives to be derived from nouns, as in boyish, bird-like, behavioral, behavioral, famous, manly, angelic, and so on. Many languages have special verbal forms called participles that can act as noun modifiers, alone or as the head of the phrase. Sometimes participles develop into pure adjectives. Examples of this in English include relieved, the past participle of the verb relieve, used as an adjective in sentences such as I am so relieved to see you, spoken, as in the spoken word, and going, the present participle of the verb go, used as an adjective in such phrases as the going rate. Other constructs that often modify nouns include prepositional phrases, as in a rebel without a cause, relative clauses, as in the man who wasn't there, and infinitive phrases, as in a cake to die for. Some nouns can also take complements such as content clauses, as in the idea that I would do that, but these are not commonly considered modifiers. For more information about possible modifiers and dependence of nouns, see components of noun phrases. In many languages, attributive adjectives usually occur in a specific order. In general, the adjective order in English can be summarized as, opinion, size, age or shape, color, origin, material, purpose. This sequence, with age preceding shape, is sometimes referred to by the mnemonic causes comp other language authorities, like the Cambridge Dictionary, alternatively state that shape precedes rather than follows age. This means that in English, Adjectives pertaining to size precede adjectives pertaining to age, little old, not old little, which in turn generally precede adjectives pertaining to color, old white, not white old. So, one would say one, quantity, nice, opinion, little, size, old, age, round, shape, or round old, white, color, brick, material, house. When several adjectives of the same type are used together, they are ordered from general to specific like lovely intelligent person or old medieval castle. This order may be more rigid in some languages than others, in some, like Spanish, it may only be a default, unmarked, word order, with other orders being permissible. Other languages, such as Tagalog, follow their adjectival orders as rigidly as English. The normal adjectival order of English may be overridden in certain circumstances, especially when one adjective is being fronted. In addition, the usual order of adjectives in English would result in the phrase the bad big wolf, opinion before size, but instead the usual phrase is the big bad wolf, perhaps because the oblate reduplication rule that high vowels precede low vowels overrides the normal order of adjectives. Owing partially to borrowings from French, English has some adjectives that follow the noun as post modifiers, called post positive adjectives, as in time immemorial and attorney general. Adjectives may even change meaning depending on whether they proceed or follow, as in proper, they live in a proper town, a real town, not a village, versus they live in the town proper, in the town itself, not in the suburbs. All adjectives can follow nouns in certain constructions, such as tell me something new. In many languages, some adjectives are comparable. For example, a person may be polite, but another person may be more polite, and a third person may be the most polite of the three. The word more here modifies the adjective polite to indicate a comparison is being made, and most modifies the adjective to indicate an absolute comparison, a superlative. Among languages that allow adjectives to be compared, different means are used to indicate comparison. Some languages do not distinguish between comparative and superlative forms. In English, many adjectives can take the suffixes or an est, sometimes requiring additional letters before the suffix, see forms for far below to indicative comparative and superlative forms, respectively. Some adjectives are irregular in this sense. Some adjectives can have both regular and irregular variations. Also, another way to convey comparison is by incorporating the words more and most. There is no simple rule to decide which means is correct for any given adjective, however. 
The general tendency is for simpler adjectives, and those from Anglo-Saxon to take the suffixes, while longer adjectives and those from French, Latin, Greek do not, but sometimes sound of the word is the deciding factor. Many adjectives do not naturally lend themselves to comparison. For example, some English speakers would argue that it does not make sense to say that one thing is more ultimate than another, or that something is most ultimate, since the word ultimate is already absolute in its semantics. Such adjectives are called non comparable or absolute. Nevertheless, native speakers will frequently play with the raised forms of adjectives of this sort. Although pregnant is logically non comparable, either one is pregnant or not. One may hear a sentence like she looks more and more pregnant each day. Likewise extinct and equal appear to be non-comparable, but one might say that a language about which nothing is known is more extinct than a well-documented language with surviving literature but no speakers, while George Orwell wrote all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. These cases may be viewed as evidence that the base forms of these adjectives are not as absolute in their semantics as is usually thought. Comparative and superlative forms are also occasionally used for other purposes than comparison. In English comparatives can be used to suggest that a statement is only tentative or tendential, one might say John is more the shy and retiring type, where the comparative more is not really comparing him with other people or with other impressions of him, but rather, could be substituting for on the whole. In Italian, superlatives are frequently used to put strong emphasis in an adjective, bellissimo means most beautiful but is in fact more commonly heard in the sense extremely beautiful. Attributive adjectives, and other noun modifiers, may be used either restrictively, helping to identify the noun's referent, hence restricting its reference or non-restrictively, helping to describe an already identified noun. For example, in some languages, such as Spanish, restrictiveness is consistently marked. For example, in Spanish la tarea difícil means the difficult task in the sense of the task that is difficult, restrictive, whereas la difícil tarea means the difficult task in the sense of the task, which is difficult, non-restrictive. In English, restrictiveness is not marked on adjectives, but is marked on relative clauses. The difference between the man who recognized me was there and the man, who recognized me, was there being one of restrictiveness. In some languages, adjectives alter their form to reflect the gender, case and number of the noun that they describe. This is called agreement or concord. Usually it takes the form of inflections at the end of the word, as in Latin. In Celtic languages, however, initial consonant lenition marks the adjective with a feminine singular noun, as in Irish. Often, distinction is made here between attributive and predicative usage. In English, adjectives never agree, and in French, they always agree. In German, they agree only when they are used attributively, and in Hungarian, they agree only when they are used predicatively. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.